right, and here's another thing for all those moms out there. Get this, you know, life doesn't have to end at middle age. You don't need a crisis, so why do so many people act like it does? Well, to help us change our perspective on aging, I talked to Lisa Levine, author of Midlife, No Crisis. Check it out. Aging gracefully just implies being quiet and shuffling off and not don't bother us with your stuff, with your menopause talk, with your wrinkles, with your anything, just shh, be quiet. And I feel like as women were taught, we're, we're given that message of be a good girl from the very beginning. And I think that's kind of a bunch of baloney. So age audaciously, take risks, do things that might feel not exactly what you're supposed to do as a good girl, but what you really feel called to do. And we've been with some of the things we've been working on our entire lives is to stop being that good little girl. Um, you talk about dreaming audaciously. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, you know, it's one thing to set a goal or to have a goal and want to achieve a goal. Simple goals are easily achieved in the sense that you know what to do. You know, if you want to get fit, you go to the gym, you lay off sugar for a little while and you know exactly what is involved. But with dreaming audaciously, it's more of a a soul calling. So it's about paying attention to what I like to call the inner glimmers or the yes, this feelings that we sometimes get. Yes. And because we're socialized in such a way that we are, you know, being good girls, we tend to um, not listen to those. Like they're, they're more like they become whispers. So by dreaming audaciously, it's tuning into what those whispers are. And if you think you don't know, I, I can't tell you how many clients I've had with where I've said, you know, what do you really dream of doing? And their first response is, I don't know, because it's so conditioned, we're conditioned not to think that way. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, you know, vision boards, journaling, even working with a coach, whatever it is to start to, to start to create a vision for yourself and really start to pay attention to those inner glimmers to lead you to divide, to, to figure that. out what your audacious dreams are. I love that because we, some of us have done really a lot of the work in trying to stop being what we were kind of raised and cultivated to be, but it's, it kind of ends there. The dreaming aspect is kind of something that gets forgotten about. Also, what is lizard brain and how is it affecting us? <laughs> so the lizard brain is really a, a term that is used sometimes for the part of our brain that's uh, the reptilian brain. It's in our brainstem. We've evolved with it since the beginning of time. And it's the part of our brain that wants to keep us safe. And so, of course, when we were supposed to, when we needed to be safe back in caveman times or on the Serengeti, it was a very different situation than now. I mean, then we were constantly scanning the horizon for what danger might be coming towards us or what danger was behind us. And our lizard brain is still there, but it's worked in different ways now. And so what happens is we have that voice in our heads telling us to be careful, don't do that. And you really suck at that. Your lizard brain wants to keep you safe, meaning it doesn't like change. It doesn't want, it wants to keep things the same and it wants to keep you small and it will, we all have it. Sometimes it sounds like, you know, our great aunt Sally or the gym teacher that we hated, you know, it can take on a, vo a voice, but it's there and knowing that it's there to protect you doesn't mean, just because you think it doesn't mean you have to believe it or listen to it. So knowing that that's in place. Yeah. It can I be very love helpful that. And empowering. It is very helpful and empowering because I, I, a lot of our older women in our lives also sometimes repeat those same things and we have to try to stop that breakthrough. Um, what are the three C's of middle life? The three C's of midlife are community, connection, and curiosity. Community because sometimes the circumstances of our life change and we want to potentially find some new exciting we want to you know basically energize our community and our connection not just to others but to ourselves as well i find a really common theme of midlife is an, a need for a deeper meaning and so connection to yourself and connection to something bigger than you and then uh curiosity because it's so much easier it's so much more it's not easier but it's so much more refreshing to be able to say instead of why is this happening to me to be able to say why why is this happening to me and mm -hmm. to channel all of that negativity any negativity into curiosity and i talk about this in my book and my book is designed it's to be 
small bite-sized pieces because when you think you're in a crisis situation, it's, you feel overwhelmed. Like you just, everything is too much and you just want to sit on the couch and, you know, watch reruns of Outlander. But when you're feeling, you know, we, <laughs> so the book is designed to be little bite-sized pieces of, um, of inspiration of, to, you know, get to re-engagement so that you don't, it's not overwhelming and they're more digestible pieces. All right. Well, there you have it.